it's Erin. Today we're going to mix things up a little bit. I'm currently getting ready for my first show of the season. It's the New York Pro and it's in about four weeks. So we thought it might be kind of fun to go through one of my actual workouts. This includes warm-up sets, working sets, and during the voiceover portion, I'll give you a view into what's going on in my head, the cues that I'm using, along with the cues you can use if you try this workout at your gym and just a general chit chat. So sort of similar to one of those get ready with me videos, but instead of mascara and concealer, we will be using barbells and dumbbells. <laughs> Without further ado, let's train. Let's get into this workout. I'm warming up on the hex bar deadlift. Typically we'll start my workouts with hip thrusts. So I wanted to mix the order up because I think it's important to not do the same thing over and over again. And I want to see how strong I am on the hip thrust after doing a big compound movement. So here, those warm up sets are really important. I did two of them. This is number two, just kind of getting a feel for the bar and increasing that circulation. First working set here at 225, I've got my wrist wraps on. Now I'm really focused on keeping my weight through the heels. It's a compound movement. Of course, you're not able to exactly isolate a muscle group, but I'm really focused on going nice and slow just to hit those glutes. And the hex bar really helps with that. I've got long femurs, a short torso, a traditional deadlift has me bending forward too far, puts a lot of strain on the lower back. This feels good, even at 225 pounds. Nice and slow on that eccentric. Try not to die and take two to five minutes and I'll be back for set number two. I had been starting my workouts with hip thrust, so I wanted to do this big compound movement, see how strong I am on hip thrust as a second exercise. So here we're still at 225. This is set number two. The goal for this workout is three working sets of six to eight reps with proper form, of course, really trying to keep that weight pushed through the heels, really focusing on controlling the bar and the weight on the way down. This is where a lot of that progress is made. So I'm about four weeks out from the New York Pro and I'm getting leaner, so getting smaller. It's always interesting to see how that strength level holds up. So here I've added five pounds to either side. So I'm at 235 pounds, really trying to focus on proper form, keeping that back nice and flat. And the form needs to stay the same, even though it'll slow down just a little bit, totally fine. Uh, but I find that my recovery now is a lot slower. Um, so I'm not rushing it in between sets, three to five minutes. And uh, it's as much a cardio workout as it is a weight workout, as you can see on my face. <laughs> so trying to time, trying to time that recovery again, uh, two to five minutes in between those big compound movements. Moving on to our exercise number two, this is hip thrusts, and I'm going to do a warm up set here just to get a feel for it. I've got the decline bench. I've swapped it out. I was using a traditional bench but I really like the decline, love the angle, helps me keep that sternum down. And the main focus here is with the mini band, I wanna push against that mini band, especially on the negative. And as I get into those working sets, I'm going to try not to let the uh, weights touch the floor. Constant tension. First working set here, I've got everything set up where I want it. And something to keep in mind, which is, you know, something I just started doing was to keep that constant tension on the glutes. I was doing more of a meathead move. I was getting full extension at the top, but I was going way too heavy and I wasn't controlling the weight on the way down. So if you feel like maybe you've hit a bit of a plateau with hip thrust, try this method, get those plates to just about the floor and let them hover there for a second, keep that constant tension and add the band too. It's gonna to increase difficulty without you having to go heavier. Uh, it hurts, it hurts so good. So the feedback I got last year was to work on glute fullness, especially upper glute fullness. So that has been the focus for many of these workouts. And adding the band really helps me to hit those upper glutes better, uh, especially on that negative portion. So you're pushing against that band, you're gonna be hitting abductors, 
um, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and again with that constant tension. So really focused on keeping that lower leg perpendicular to the floor, pushing through the heels, keeping that chin tucked, that sternum down. This is our last set here, working up to 315. Uh, three sets of eight to 10 reps is the goal here. So this is about as heavy as I normally go as uh, far as the first exercise would go on hip thrust. So strength is pretty good today. Really working on getting that full extension, holding, and again, not letting those plates touch the floor makes a lot of difference. And really focusing on making this a glute centric lift, not a total body lift. So chin stays tucked, core stays tight, push, 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 and hold. And try not to die. <laughs> Welcome to the craziest setup for this workout. I love my back hypers. I love banded back hypers. I love weighted back hypers. Why not pull the back hyper machine over to the cable machine and combine exercises here? So we're, we've got the back hyper. I have a plate there just for safety purposes. I'm very accident prone. And if something's going to flip over, it will be me flipping it over. So we're just going to ensure that doesn't happen. I've got my toes hanging off the platform, toes out slightly, and I'm going to keep that back nice and flat. I want to think about pushing my pelvis forward at the top and really getting that good squeeze. And on this set, I have the cable all the way down. I'm feeling it in my glutes, feeling it in my hamstrings. I'm also feeling it in my back. I don't particularly care for that. So I'm going to make some adjustments and we're going to try on exercise or set number two to see if that makes a difference. So here, three sets of 15 reps and nice, slow and controlled this is a different angle than anything you're used to probably. And it feels good. Set number two with some adjustments here. So I've bumped up that cable three notches. So it's a little bit higher and keeping my lower back flat, but you'll notice a little bit of a round to the upper back and I've got my arms fully extended. So now I'm just stabilizing with the back and all of the exertion is really coming from those glutes. If you want to hit glutes even better, you want to turn those toes out a little bit more, get those heels a little closer together, go nice and slow and keep that constant tension. So that has been the goal for this workout so far is just isolate and keep tension. <laughs> so 15 reps here, really working on keeping that core nice and tight and really focused training in the muscle. As you get tired, you'll want to kind of switch to other muscle groups to take over. Don't let that happen. Stay in the muscle on those last few reps when it gets very difficult because those are the reps that count. So I'm thinking each rep is going to bring me closer to stage closer to success and success for me means that I'm getting better from season to season. You know, I think that placings do come along with that, but ultimately if, if I reach those objective goals that I've set for myself, I'm happy, but I can't leave anything on the field, if you will. So I'm making sure that each rep counts. So when I get to that end, when I get to the stage, I can look back and I can say, I gave it a hundred percent. I gave it everything I had. There wasn't a moment that I didn't give a hundred percent and that's physically, mentally, it's, it's everything. It's, it's your mindset. And so these workouts, even though I'm four weeks out are, are very important to me and really working on changing my physique, even as I'm dieting for a show. Last set, it was supposed to be three sets of 15 reps, but we're working on set number four because that first set was kind of garbage. So <laughs> don't feel bad. If you're not feeling it in the intended muscle and you want to do an extra set, you do that extra set because the first set for me was a lot of lats and I really, really want to get that volume in because it's not a very high volume workout. 
um, and just want to make sure that I'm hitting the intended muscle groups. So here, toes off the platform, make sure that that pad is below the crease of the hips so you can get that full range of motion, keeping those arms extended, keeping constant, constant tension. And at 15 reps, my goodness, you will feel the burn. If you don't want to go through this whole rigmarole, you can do this with a band too, as long as you attach the band to something sturdy, um, that would be a pretty good substitute. But overall, loving this variation and would recommend it if you are a fan of back hypers. Uh, it just requires a little bit of setup and uh, it's hard to get up after that. <laughs> For this exercise, this is an abductor machine uh, split with an adductor machine. I really like using it this way. And, you know, you've seen influencers use it like this in the past, but I'm working on abduction and also I want to get some external rotation in there. So, you know, if you're hitting the machine the same way every, every single time, it's really tough. You're just going to build up the muscle in one area and not others. So I'm going to do two sets of 20 facing backwards and then two sets of 20 facing the right way, but we're going to make some changes with that too. So here I am working on keeping my body as still as possible. I want all of the effort to come from those upper glutes and really just focus on keeping that constant tension. I used to be really worried about what people would think when I was training. And it's funny because I'm not saying I don't care at all right now, but people in the gym are more concerned with what they're doing and not what you're doing. And also if you know something is effective and it's going to help get you to your goal, then you put your head down and you do the exercise, even if it looks silly and this looks silly, but it's very effective. And uh, although I'm aiming for 20 reps, I will rep out five extra just to get that burn, get a good pump. And then we're gonna switch sides or we're gonna flip around the other way, <laughs> the right way. So for this variation, what I want you to think about is scooting your butt off the seat just a little bit, extending your legs out and pointing your toes down just a little bit. And this is going to hit the upper glutes a little bit more in the center. And this variation is killer. You won't be able to go as heavy, but again, if you're used to doing a machine the exact same way every single time, it's really helpful to come up with little variations. That way you can hit different parts of the muscle and continue to make progress. And two sets of 20 here, this is the end of the workout. I'm about cached, but really focused on using just my upper glutes to move the machine, nothing else. Focused on breathing and pumping out a few last reps at the end. Now for the isolation exercises, I'm gonna take about 30 seconds to a minute recovery. Last set here, as I'm going through the workout, I dread and look forward to it at the same time and this isolation work is kind of like icing on the cake um, it's not particularly taxing physically because it's such a small muscle group we're working on but mentally you know you have to stick with it you got to stay in the muscle for the entire workout and I think that that's one of the challenging aspects as you get tired physically you're tired mentally you kind of want to check out but you can't if you want that ideal physique, every single rep is going to count. You're a sculptor. Again, this is uh, three, three to four workouts per week. So that's it for this workout. I'll give it 48 to 72 hours and I'll be back at it again. So every single day I will work on posing after I work out. Posing practice is really important because of course you're going to be posing on stage and I like to get it on camera because I want to see what I can improve upon and you know in my mind there's always something to improve upon so as the weeks go by I will get leaner little things like a twist do you twist or do you sway how do you walk what are you doing with your hands 
you want to show the judges all of the best parts of you. So it's fun to go back and look at these videos to see what can be improved upon. And I always think I haven't improved until we find videos from last year or the year before. And uh, it's, it's really neat. It's neat to see the progression and to see your work take life and what you see in your mind become a reality. If you'd like to see similar videos in the future, please comment below. If there's something specific that you'd like to see, please let us know and we'll make it happen. If you try this workout for yourself and you love it, please tag me on social media. And don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like the video, it really helps the algorithm. That's it for this time. Until next time, train hard, y'all.